Okay, so ignore the green tint to the uh, sculpture. I was trying to use something else to make the mould, see, see if it would be a bit quicker, and it didn't work. It just wouldn't come off the sculpture after, so I've had to scrape it off to get as much of the detail back as I can. So ignore the green tint to everything. I've still concealed the detail though. Um, I did manage to break it as well because I'm an idiot but I've glued it to get back together with some Gorilla Glue and um, what I'm doing now is I've got a large piece of clay and I've just smoothed it out as best as I can because if you remember the wet clay doesn't stick to the dry clay very well so I know that if I do a mould using this it will dry and I'll be able to just peel it off I would normally just cast this in um, plaster but I don't want to ruin the sculpture if I can help it so I'm just going to try this way first because I want to make a couple of prosthetics out of this hopefully so I've got my big piece of clay and I've just rolled it out so it's big enough to cover the prosthetic and I've smoothed it down as best as I can on the inside and then I'm going to place that over the top of the prosthetic press it down I want to make sure I get all the detail around the edge and everything um, I'm just going to make sure it completely covers the prosthetic I'm pressing firmly but I'm not pressing hard enough to break the sculpture underneath or anything Once this has started to harden, it should stay in the shape it's at, so I won't get any distortion in the prosthetic. I'll just tip the camera up a bit more. Okay. Um, and also, what I want to do is the top here. I'm going to get that as flat as I can, because then I can get this mould to stand. I'll show you if I can. If I can get the top right, I can get it so it will stand on a table like that. So I can pour the latex in without any trouble. I'm just going to give it a wiggle on the table. So there you go, so that will be freestanding once I take it, I'll take the sculpture out. And it means I can just pour the latex in, leave it stood there on the table and it will work. If it was tilted that way or that way or any, or not level, then you'd end up with thicker latex one end than the other. So if I make sure it stands nice and straight and level, um, that way I get a nice even prosthetic without any, like without one side being thicker than the other. And I'm just gonna, as you can see, you can see on the inside where I've added that extra bit of clay. I'm just gonna blend those edges together. And because I'm in quite a warm room, it does start to set quite quick. So I'm actually finding that the clay underneath is not wanting to cooperate as much as the clay I've just added. So it's already starting to set a little bit. That's why I'm having trouble blending these edges together. And as you can see it's going to lift off the sculpture quite quite easy. I'll show you. And underneath there will be where the mould will be. I'm going to leave it a bit longer though. I don't want it to peel off the sculpture just yet because I want to make sure I've got that detail. Um, so what I need to do is leave this clay on the sculpture on top of my live cast like that. And I need to leave this clay for about, it's going to be about two hours. And then it won't be like completely solid because it takes 24 hours to completely cure. But after a couple of hours, it will be firm enough that I'll be able to take the other sculpture out and just have the mould. Because um, obviously if I leave it too long, I run the risk of possibly not being able to get this back out. But as you can see... The wet clay doesn't stick to the dry, so it should should be fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave that for a couple of hours. 
depending on how the clay starts to dry off. If the clay goes firm after about an hour, I'll take it off. If it's two hours, I'll wait two hours. So what I'm going to do now is leave that there. And I'm going to take a bit more clay. And just roll it out into a ball. Like so. And if you notice, I've made the little slits. Here's the bottom one, because the bottom one kept coming off. I've made some little slits, oops, which will go at the top and at the bottom of the eye, so it looks like the red lines are actually cut into the skin. So I need to make moulds for those as well. Luckily for these, the moulds don't have to be very big. So I'll just get a blob of clay like that, and I'm going to press that over the top of there. Oops, and then that lifts that off. And because I pressed it on there, this piece of clay has got a slight curve, into it, curve to it, so it's going to match the shape of my head better. And that will be, when I peel that out, I'll have a mould for the prosthetic to make that slit there. Okay, so I've given it about two hours to dry, and I've managed to peel the sculpture I made out of the mould. And if you look, I'm left with a mould that looks like that. So all I've got to do now is pour in some latex and I'll have the prosthetic. I've given it, you could leave this overnight just to set rock hard if you want to. Um, I'm just going to pour the latex into it now and it should still work. Um, it's holding the shape really well. I've just got to dust out any little bits of clay, which I've, I've got most of them out. I'm going to get some fluffing or something. And then what you can do, if you think some of the detail is not quite as defined as you'd like, you can, also, you can always just use the end of a paintbrush and just press down on the clay just to define the shape of some of those teeth a little bit like that so I've got a couple of the teeth don't look like they've come out fantastically well that should be enough for what I want it'll still give the effect of 3D teeth anyway and then I'm going to take some liquid latex and pour that into the mould and first of all I'm just going to swish that around just to make sure I coat the whole of the inside of the mould just making sure it fills all the surfaces fills in all the detail and all the edges like so I just keep swishing it around just to make sure I get a good layer of latex over the whole mould and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do about three or four layers of latex in this using the same technique where I just gently swish it around the mould if I was to um, brush, it, brush it in a bit too firmly or anything I might have air bubbles whereas if I just swish it around gently like this I should get a nice smooth coating on the latex I've got what I've got one air bubble there If you see an air bubble, just pop it if you can. I'm just going to keep going round, coating all the edges and all the surface of that mould. 
Okay, so I've poured in three layers of latex and I'm leaving that to set. I've just got the last layer of latex in there. It's starting to set right around the edges and stuff, but in the middle it's still really soft. Um, so I'm going to have to leave that overnight. So, so yeah, that's how you um, create the mould and then pour the latex in to create the prosthetic. Um, I've got some little pieces which are the little slits and I'll just show you how it works. Once you've poured the latex in and the latex is set, you can very gently remove them from the mould and that will be the prosthetic that you apply to your skin. I've just got to be careful with that one because I haven't powdered it because normally what you do I find the surface that's touched the clay doesn't need powdering because it seems to get a bit of a residue off the clay but I need to powder this side so it doesn't stick to itself if it gets folded over and I'll, the same thing will happen with this all I'll have to do is when it's dry so when it's gone this colour it's just a case of peeling it out to create the prosthetic so I'll show you that in the next video for now I'll have to leave that to dry um, so yeah tomorrow I'll show you how to remove the prosthetic from the mould.